be tough to be a jockey. Oh, Gary Stevens, that storming home went down. He did Sometimes, even when you win, you lose. As Gary Stevens proved when he finished on a stretcher after crossing the line first in the 2003 Arlington Million. What made it worse was that even as he was being taken to hospital with a punctured lung, the stewards were taking the race from him, relegating his mount storming home to fourth because of the interference he caused. Stevens recovered to resume his place at the figurative head of the US jockey ranks, although that was hardly surprising. He had been overcoming hardship and confounding expectation all his life, becoming a Hall of Fame jockey despite being forced to wear a brace for 19 months at the age of seven because of a degenerative disease of the hip. By eight, he was a groom for his father, Ron, in Idaho, and by 14, he was riding quarter horses. By 16, he was an apprentice jockey and he won at his first race ride, establishing himself quickly in the top bracket of Washington riders. Stephen's good looks, intelligence and confidence made his path easier, but they belied his toughness. For much of his career, he rode with constant pain. He moved to California in the 1980s with stunning success. By 1993, he had become the youngest jockey to surpass $100 million in prize money won. Stevens won eight Triple Crown races, the first of them on winning colours in the 1988 Kentucky Derby. He won three of the classics at Churchill Downs and twice came within a whisker of winning the Triple Crown. Gulch took the 1995 Kentucky Derby and the Belmont Stakes, but finished only third in the Preakness in between. Two years later, Stevens was aboard the brilliant young Galloper Silver Chart. After wins in the Derby and the Preakness, he famously labelled the colt a certain to complete the Triple Crown in the Belmont Stakes. to describe this win over famed Irish jockey Mick Canaan, his greatest thrill. So here we go, the 1998 Dubai World Cup, Silver Charm on the outside. On the inside, Barron's one of the first to go on, but here comes the favourite, Silver Charm, and setting down, Barron's is going to take them along from Silver Charm in second. Bringing up uh, in fifth place. From Lusavage from France on the far side, Barron's back in third, Malik is in fourth, and it's Lusavage on the far side. He's been at the moment it's Lusavage, Silver Charm, Malak in third, on the outside it's Swain, but it's Lusavage, but Silver Charm comes again, this is incredible, Swain is flying, Swain might beat the favourite, what a finishing prospect, Silver Charm and Swain, it's a photo, it's a great photo. It was probably one of the best horse races I had not only witnessed, but uh, I was actually a part of. Um, and to be in a full battle with Mick Canam, one of the most world-class jockeys that there's ever been, and come out a nose in front, uh, it was probably the best, uh, most exhilarating moment that I've ever felt in my life. A few Leaves months later in 1998, the, the Triple Crown he had missed so narrowly the year before was alive Belmont. again coming into the Belmont Stunts. But this time, it was Stevens doing the thwarting. His ride on Victory Gallop was acclaimed as one of the greatest in Belmont history, as he denied Kent de Sormo the Triple Crown and Derby and Preakness winner real quiet. with the blanket of carnations as they win the 130th running of the Belmont State. Point given has been the favorite since the end of his fight. Stevens was struggling with chronic pain to his knee. He had three operations in four years, and when he had a fourth in 1999 to remove a cyst from his right knee, he returned for just one meeting and quit. But the call of the center was too great, and his retirement lasted less than a year. The big wins just kept on coming. Here is a powerful, compelling performance by point given. He is under the line to win the Belmont by 11 lengths at the finish. Sensational effort here.
Triple Crown victories on point given in the Preakness and Belmont of 2001 meant that his earlier defeat in the Kentucky Derby took on added significance. In 2003, Stevens again showed his flair for the extraordinary by playing a leading role in the movie Seabiscuit. Most of us have been riding together for 15, 16 years. To get the opportunity uh, to play this part has been really special for me. His performance as legendary jockey George Wolfe was particularly significant given that he had previously won the George Wolfe Memorial Award voted by his riding peers for his contribution to the industry. Side of Corey. We do a walkthrough in our positions and actually make the moves on foot prior to the filming of a particular scene. The casting of Gary Stevens was probably the most spontaneously correct bit of casting I've ever experienced. Anybody who's that accomplished as an athlete has a certain fire and competitiveness in them. Kind of small, isn't he? Gonna look a lot smaller in a second, Georgie. Seabiscuit was a huge success, and Stevens even toyed with the idea of turning to acting full-time. It didn't happen, and he was soon back riding for real. His fall from storming home in the Arlington Million was very nearly a case of life imitating art. A punctured lung and an injured shoulder could have been a lot worse, and he returned in triumph to Arlington Park where he took another Group 1 in the Beverly D in 2005. A few months later, he announced his retirement, this time for good. After 5,005 winners of more than $221 million in prize money, and at the age of 42, he retired to become a form analyst, manager and television commentator. He makes it look easy. The mix of his racing knowledge and his confidence assure winner. But that's no surprise either. It's all part of the act for a jockey who always was a lot, lot tougher than he looked.